I want to talk about how to get the job based on how we interview. A big angry black man comes walking in waving a gun and you assume he's robbing the place? I ain't looking for no god handout. I'm looking for a motherfucking job. Excuse me? You heard me? A mother job. Don't you Tell me about yourself. I have anger issues. <sighs> I'm a mess. So why are you interested in this company? Um, I want to go on trips with my friends. I got bills to pay. Why else would somebody want to work here? So basically, as the candidate, you need to paint a picture about your outcomes. I ain't telling you shit. But big up the company in a sense by saying I researched you. Mm -hmm. We'll say he was on time. Waiting. We'll say that he perhaps gave a firm handshake. Okay. You had a weak handshake, bro. Okay. Now, when you do the firm handshake and when you are giving eye contact, please do not stare. Why are you looking for employment elsewhere? Because I'm broke and I need a job and y'all hiring. How much do you know about this company? I know y'all hiring. We are. And y'all sell like groceries. Where do you see yourself in five years? I want to own every H and &E. What do you hope to gain as an employee with this company? Job. That'll help me develop valuable job skills and experience. It's like teaching a man how to fish. So quit stalling, get your ass back there, and give me a 40 hour a week position with vacation pay and benefits. You piece of it, mother. Don't make me ask twice. Well, so that we can be relevant. Re uh, re what is the word? Revelant? What's the word I'm looking for? Prevalent? No. What's the word relevant. I'm looking for? Relevant. Relevant, yes. <laughs> relevant, thank you. <laughs> so we can be relevant. You and that apricot uh, sweater suit. Get your on over here now. How can I help you today? Um, I'd like to deposit this check, please, into my savings account, and then I need to withdraw yeah, some yeah, 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 yeah. Just What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Do It All, Dupre Kelly. Now, excuse me, Councilman Dupre Kelly, and you're watching Urban Tools for Change Network. Hey, Doc, where you at? Dr. Lisa Lacombe, you already know how it goes down. Come on. Hello, my urbanites. How are you all doing this wonderful evening? You have landed and entered into the urban suite with me, Dr. Lisa Lacan. Let me take off my glasses for this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, you guys, we have a huge show tonight. So after these messages, we're going to get more back into what we're going to discuss in the urban suite. We're talking about hallucinations. All right. Do you know what a hallucination is? Because many people get delusions and hallucinations mixed up. But after you leave the urban suite with me tonight, you're going to understand what an hallucination is. And I'm not going to go too deep into what a delusion is. That's going to be next week. All right. So I need you to like. I need you to share. I need you to tell folks. Guess what? The doctor is in the house. In the urban suite. We'll be right back. Stick with us. You are entering the urban suite with Dr. Lisa Lacan. Let's talk about urban issues plaguing our community. Let's talk about mental health. All right, so we are back, and tonight we're talking about hallucinations. 
hallucinations are, well, I'm not going to tell you right now or else that will be the show in just what, five minutes. So after our word from our sponsor, Bless Ministries Incorporated and the missing person, we will dig into what hallucinations are. All right. So I need you all to stay with me after a word from our sponsor, Blessed Ministries Incorporated, and our missing person. We'll be right back. All right, so I'm missing person report right now. Her name is Destiny Ayana Patterson. Destiny Ayana Patterson has been missing since March 28, 2023 from Chesapeake, Virginia. Where's my bell? Uh oh, somebody done took my bell. Oh, somebody put my, wait, I, I, this is not, I can't, I gotta do my bell. Here we go. Destiny Ayana Patterson. She's been missing since March 28th, 2023 from Chesapeake, Virginia. Listen, you Chesapeake Virginians, I need you to look at her picture. All of Hampton Roads, that's Norfolk, Portsmouth, Virginia Beach, Hampton, Newport News, that whole Hampton Roads area, she's been missing since March. And we're in what, May? So she's only 16 years old, missing from Chesapeake, Virginia. She's a female, her race, she's biracial. Her complexion is light. She's 5'7", 120 pounds. Her hair color is brown. Her hair length is long and her eye color is brown. Now listen, I said she was 16 years old. That's very young to be missing since March the 28th. That's very young to be missing from any date. So listen to this location last seen. Destiny Ayana Patterson was last seen leaving Indian River High School on March 28th at 1 p.m. wearing a green and tan and blue jeans. And then listen to this. This is when it gets tricky. Her circumstances of her disappearance. Destiny got into a sedan with an adult man. According to News 10 Wavy, Chesapeake police confirmed that they tracked that man down. He cooperated with officers and Destiny wasn't found with him. Where is Destiny? So anyone with information, please contact Chesapeake Police Department at area code 757-382-6000. One again, that's area code 757 382 6161. And you can contact BAMFI, that's the Black and Missing Foundation Incorporated. And that telephone number is 877 97 BAMFI. Again, that number is 877 97 BAMFI. Listen, let's bring destiny home. Thank you. Yeah, we have Felicia. We have my source, Cynthia. Good evening. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that blue. Look at that. Mm. <laughs> of course you love the blue. Ooh, yes, I, had, I got my little look. <laughs> Jessica Burns. Jessica Burns. Good evening. Good evening, Jessica and Felicia. Oh, thank you. 
evening, good evening. And Nas, thank you. That's my family right there. Nas, I tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining into the Urban Suite. And if this is your first time, you are now officially an urbanite. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's right. All right. So. In honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, my banner is green. You see that? Where's that? Right that way? Yeah, that that right right there. That banner is green. That's the Mental Health Awareness Cup. Green is the color. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about hallucinations and what are hallucinations? Because some people, especially in our community, we get hallucinations and delusions wrong. Let's see. Good evening. Good evening, Jesse. Thank you for showing up in the urban suite. All right, so let's get into it. I have to take off my glasses. All right. So remember when you were in grade school? I'm talking to my TikTok people too. Hold on for a second. I'm turn my phone around for my TikTokers. So remember when you were in grade school and you learned about your five senses? So. What are your five senses, your primary senses that you have? And I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit sense. I'm not talking about spiritual sense, soul sense. I'm just talking about the basic five senses that we have. So remember, we used to do this little thing in school with your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, and your fingers to touch. Those are your five senses. So that's the realm of hallucinations. Hallucinations are basically what it's a perception that your five senses are being activated when in actuality they are not. So let's bring up this definition, which is really good. This is from a knowledge graph. It's a perception of having seen, heard, being touched, tasted, or smell, but it's not really there. It's all in your mind. Your brain is processing all of this information to be real, whereas in actuality, it does not exist. So what does it look like? It may look like you may see a person, but that person is not there really in actuality that person does not exist that's called a visual hallucination when you are under the impression based on what your brain is signaling that you are seeing someone that's not there that's visual see you see something and it does not exist so say for instance some hallucinations are caused by uh, drug usage, psychiatric disabilities. So sometimes people with schizophrenia, they may see people that aren't really there. And that's a visual hallucination. Dr. Lisa, yeah. Dr. Lisa, one quick thing. Now, yes. how do they determine if the person might, is not having actual physical something wrong with their eyes or something like that? How did they determine that before they know it's a hallucination or two? Well, say for instance, what if you and I are in the office, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, Curtis, did you see that squirrel? <laughs> I say, no, We're right. in the there's no squirrel. There's no squirrel, <laughs> but I really believe I saw a squirrel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how you can determine whether someone is visually hallucinating, whether or not the object actually exists. Yeah. I mean, because it might, may, what if there's like a brain thing or something like that where, you know, because like some people are colorblind, so they don't see the same colors as we do. Like they're like, no, nah, that's gray. And I'm like, no, it's red. Well, <laughs> it is a form of your brain malfunctioning. Right, right. Right. It is a form of your brain malfunctioning. So this is what I tell people when I counsel them and they have a family member that has a psychiatric disability. I tell them that basically, you know, it's sort of like your brain not functioning as it ought. 
sort of like if you have a bad heart, if you have bad lungs, mm -hmm. that is an organ that is responsible for recording data and transmitting data. So if your brain is impaired in some area, you can actually have these visuals, visual hallucinations, and they appear as if they are real, but they really do not exist. Right, right, right. Because like when you take hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic drugs or something like that, you might be thinking you're seeing something, but it's your brain making you think you're seeing something. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, like LSD. They, drugs, they see that. Right, LSD. When people yeah. used to say, you know, we're I'm tripping. Mm -hmm. And that's a visual hallucination. It does not exist. It's all in your brain. And then the next one is um, hearing. And that's the They're auditory. What's it? Get you. They're out to get you. Someone's out to get you. They're coming for you. Someone's outside the door. Can you yes. <laughs> right. That's an auditory hallucination when you actually hear things that don't exist. And somebody might be talking to you. What'd you say? Somebody might be talking to you, but nobody's there. Right. You hear it in your head. Mm. It's all in your head, but it doesn't really exist. And people with uh, schizophrenia, they have this type of uh, hallucination where they may hear thoughts of, you know, maybe someone is out to get them. Mm. Can't believe somebody's out to get you. Yeah. I'll take you. <laughs> and, and, and it's very hard because it's internal. Whereas the visual one, you can prove that more readily because mm. it's an external thing. Mm. Whereas mm. the hearing is internal. Only I can hear those voices. And I can say to you, um, is somebody saying something? Did you just say something? I mean, in, in that sense, you can kind of test the waters and say, okay, mm -hmm. no, this person is hallucinating because no one is saying anything, but this person is swearing that basically they are hearing someone talk to them. And if you remember, that's what the son of Sam, remember the dog was talking to him. Right. Remember he said the dog was... Yes. And he really believed that, that he heard the dog speaking to him. Telling him to do bad stuff. Yeah. Do, right. And oftentimes those voices are used as a protection, but to do evil. So it's sort of like, so and so's out to get you. Out of you know? mm -hmm. So now, oh my gosh, if, if this person is out to get me, I have to protect myself. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? If I need to protect myself, now I am going into the realm of violent behavior, possibly, mm -hmm. possibly. But that's the auditory hallucinations where you believe you really hear something that does not exist. And then the next one is olfactory, which is your nose. Smelling. You think you may smell things that don't exist. Oftentimes that could be hormonal. It could be if you're diagnosed with a psychiatric disability. Also, it could be used, um, it could be having, uh, because of drugs. So oftentimes people that have this type of hallucination, they smell things that don't really exist. Now, I know for me, I have a, a good smelling whatever. I can smell a mile away that some people can't. Yeah. Now, I don't know why, but... I think then, we, I think women have a better sense of smell sometimes. And also, too, when I know when women get pregnant, I feel like their sense of smell is better than a yes. normal person. Right. So, and that, it is the hormones, like you said. That is correct. That is correct. It's very hormonal. Very hormonal. With the, You're more sensitive. However, the difference is that smell really does exist. Mm -hmm. It's just it hasn't reached other people near you. Right. right. And see, maybe there's a, there's a realm where, like, there's senses that people have that are heightened senses that other people can't see it and they won't agree. But then after that, it's a hallucination. 
because sometimes correct. the other people won't smell the same thing, but they have a better nose than everybody. Right. So everybody going to think that they crazy when they're really not. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's what the olfactory is. Now, the touching is the tactile or the formication. Now, the tactile where you really believe someone is touching you. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get into the realm of sometimes this can become sexual in nature because you really feel that you're being touched in a sexual way also. It's not just, you know, hands, whatever, but this is like, you know, it, it has a, a sexual nature component to this one. And it's not just, you know, touch, 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 touch. You may have dreams, you may have, you know, whatever. And you, you really, in your head, feel like you are being touched when in actuality, it doesn't exist. There's no one touching you. Now, again, on this one as well, mm -hmm. um, and you see this, I mean, I've seen this with people that might have been on drugs for a long time. They feel like their body is itching and they feel like bugs are on them or something that like is that. Correct. Yes, that's enough. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, that's like a, uh, isn't that a disease where people think like there's bugs on them and stuff? Like, right. Like, that's the somatic also. That's, mm -hmm. And we're going to get into that one. But also the touching is not only that what I just said, but okay. yeah, the bugs and they doing all okay. that other stuff. Okay, and, that's somatic. Okay. Right, right. The 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 feeling mutilated and okay snakes crawling in you and oh, okay. that's, bugs the crawling. Okay. that's the somatic. That's the general somatic feeling. Body is being mutilated by bugs, snakes, whatever, now, even cut off. And then you have the tasting. Hold on, real quick, real quick. Now with the touching, mm -hmm. could it be like memories or something like that? Could the person be having? like memories to something that they felt before or something like that? Like, you know, like like you when you go to a certain place, I don't know, if you smell a sp certain smell, you're going to get memories of something. So then now they smell the smell. So then they feel somebody touching them because they remember. I'm just stretching, but I'm just... Yes, yes, you are. I see, <laughs> I see your face. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> could it ever be that the person is just kind of maybe experiencing a memory too, too, too good or something like that? When they feel like they feel somebody, they just remember somebody touching them like that. Well, answer this. Answer this. I'm going to ask you a question. Answer this. Because, I mean, that's a good question. So, the touching. Mm -hmm. Are they touching themselves and they feel it? Right, 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 right. Or are they stating that someone else is touching them? Yeah, because that, that would be, I guess, the difference. But, like, you know, yeah. Because, I mean, sometimes people... You know, when they were in love with somebody and they feel like, oh, I just remember them touching me, you know, you know what I mean? So they kind of like relive it, you know? Mm, Curtis. <laughs> go to the next one. <laughs> you go, All right. Go to the next one. <laughs> Ta <laughs> Tasting. Tasting hallucination. The proper word is gustatory. Gustatory hallucination. Mm -hmm. Gustatory hallucination is you believe that you're tasting, oftentimes it's like an iron or lead, like a metallic taste mm. without, without taking medications. Because oftentimes some medications can cause you to have a metallic -y taste as a side effect. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking, there's nothing, you drink water and you think the water is tastes like lead, mm. you know, or you think the water tastes like some type of uh, chemical or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it kind of is a barrier for you to eat mm -hmm. or drink because you don't like the taste mm -hmm. that is being consumed. Mm -hmm. So that is gustatory hallucination. Now, you think that's associated with eating disorders a lot? Like you think that might be... It could be, yes. Because I, I actually have somebody in my family that like doesn't eat anything and they don't give any good reasons for it. They don't like to eat any normal foods and stuff, but it has to be, you know, psychological psychological at this point. Right. It it definitely could be, especially if what the brain is telling them how the food tastes, which is not pleasing to them. So anything that they may put in their mouth, whether it's a beverage or liquid or a solid food or whatever, it just doesn't taste good. Mm -hmm. 
but it's an hallucination because how can all foods and that taste good <laughs> right <laughs> it's a pizza so say yeah. for instance if i have that and you don't and we're eating a pizza mm. from the same box and i cut off you know a slice and i i half the slice and gave you that slice of the whole slice and i have the other slice this is one slice of a pizza you're eating that half a slice i'm eating that half a slice the other half a slice but then i think it tastes nasty mm -hmm. like it's loaded with iron or some type of metallic -y taste and i'm not on medication mm -hmm. because again there's some medications where you can have that metallic -y taste but this is there's nothing that is the cause for that metallic -y taste and but you still taste it okay one other thing though mm -hmm. now explain what how pica relates to that so pica and that's something that i had pica i had low iron so my body was missing something it was deficient in iron so as a result of that i gravitated toward things that i thought tasted good which don't which really they don't. normally don't right yes. <laughs> right I, my thing was uh what was it baking soda baking soda yeah. right so i would do baking soda and, um, 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 <laughs> it's delicious <laughs> well so, yeah. some people eat dirt you know some what I mean? people like, eat dirt some yeah. people eat wood some people eat bricks yeah, i yeah. ate some people eat chalk yes yeah, some yeah. people eat coal mm -hmm. and they really think that it tastes good good i really thought baking soda was so good i mean every single day i was eating well not eating because i didn't ingest it i would i it's had tasted. to taste the baking soda because i in my my mind was telling me oh my god i had a craving for it but now again that's not technically a hallucination because your body really didn't need the iron and you was just and it was just trying to make you get it in in a weird way. Well, the hallucination comes in when I believe it tastes good. Y yeah, that's all right. Yeah, because it. <laughs> <laughs> or when somebody eating dirt and clay and thinking. Or right. Bread. I believe, and I'm looking to my TikTokers. <laughs> I believe bacon soda tasted good because I had pica. So pica again is. It's a condition that you want to ingest, sometimes ingest, or just put in your mouth food that has no nutritional value at all because your body is craving something. My body was craving iron, so I was iron deficient. And as a result of being iron deficient, oh, my body craved bacon soda. But I, in a sense, you can say, I hallucinated that the baking soda tasted good. Right, right. Now, is because there iron? It does not taste good. Right. Is there iron in baking soda? I don't know. I know it's loaded with sodium. Yeah. So, so <laughs> it was just making you think that that was the source of your iron. For some... Right. Mm. I don't know. It was just, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. And then the last one is the general somatic. So the general somatic is what I say when you, you, you feel as if your body's being mutilated, you feel as if snakes, you, you actually see the snakes. Mm -hmm. That's the visual. And now you feel the snakes going inside your body. So this is what those hallucinations will do. They really make you believe that certain things exist. They make you believe that you're seeing things that don't exist. They make you believe that you hear things that don't exist. They make you believe that you smell, feel in terms of touch, taste, and that objects are going in and out of your body or mutilating your body. And those are hallucinations. And I'm gonna briefly say what the difference is between an hallucination and a delusion. A delusion is a faulty belief system not based on your senses. It's a faulty belief system based on your cognition. So a delusion would be, what if I thought, I thought I was Mary J. Blige? Right, right. 
that's a delusion. And I carried myself like Mary J. Blige. I did the dance <laughs> <laughs> like Mary J. Blige. And I really believe that I was Mary J. Blige. Now, this is where they can blend. If I look in the mirror, right. I would actually see me looking like Mary J. Blige, mm -hmm. but I'm not. So a delusion, and I'm going to talk about delusions next week, but delusions deal with your thoughts, your cognition, that area and that realm of your brain where you have this faulty belief system about something that really does not exist. And that is basically, you know, the difference. So where I'm going with this, I'm stacking this up because I'm going to talk about what schizophrenia is. A lot of people believe that schizophrenia is the same as having multiple personalities. That is not the truth. That is not the case. So what I'm talking about right here are some of the traits that people have when they are diagnosed with schizophrenia. They have these hallucinations. One of the most common hallucinations would be the visual as well as the auditory hallucinations. So it's it's a it's a very fascinating. It really, really is. One All question. Times, mm -hmm. well, did 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 Jeffrey Dahmer have schizophrenia? I don't know. That's so all like serial killers don't have to have schizophrenia. No, no, no. Mm -mm. They could just no. be, you know. They mean, could be diagnosed with something else, devastating. but they may not necessarily be diagnosed as a person that has schizophrenia. But and like, I think what we have to do is there's so much stigma behind mental illness that we have to really have these discussions. And this is why this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Now, I don't know if you all know, but there is a difference between mental health and mental illness. Do you know what the difference is, Curtis? No, tell me. All right, so mental health is you're managing your mental ability. You're managing it however way you manage it, whether it's through medication, whether it's through meditation, whether it's through whatever, you are managing it. Mental illness means that you're not managing it. It's no difference than having an illness in another organ of your body. This one is just here mentally. You are not mentally stable. And people often think that people who aren't mentally stable are violent. But that's not the case all the time. Hmm. That's not the case. They're not violent. So there's this beautiful movie with, um, it's called A Beautiful Mind. Yeah, I've seen that. With, uh, with Dr. Nash. Mm -hmm. He is a brilliant, well, he was a brilliant um, professor at Princeton University here in New Jersey. Unfortunately, he and his wife were killed in a car accident on the Garden State Parkway. Hmm. But he had schizophrenia. Oh, okay. He has schizophrenia. And I have to say, when I watched that movie, I had schizophrenia with him as well because I believed his world. Mm. Well, they showed it to you in the movie, like, so that they would help you. Yeah. Right. And yeah, that's how, his perspective. That movie, yeah. yes, that movie will give you a slither of what it feels like to have or to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Right. Because I really believed what he was saying. Mm -hmm. I really believed in the people that he saw. That's visual. Mm -hmm. I really believed he didn't really have auditory. He had more visual hallucinations. So what did he do? So he found out what his medication regimen is. He went back in the classroom to work because they removed him from the classroom so that he can become well, so he, he can have this mental health. So when they moved him back in the classroom, he was lecturing. And then he saw yet a visual hallucination. He saw the same people that he used to always see. So what did he do? He asked his, I guess she was a student of his, 
Do you see these people? No, actually, I'm, I take that back. He saw new people and he wasn't certain if that was his mind playing tricks on him or if those people were real. So he randomly selected a student and asked the student, tell me what you see in that corner. And she said, oh, I see a man wearing a black coat and a top hat. And then he's like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And that was the guy from the committee of the um, Paul Stiller Prize Committee. Yeah. Well, because well, he, had never, he had never seen him before. So he was like, okay, is this a new person in my hallucinatory mind? Yeah. So we're saying that, and you'll discuss this, I'm, I'm sure, next week, that like the drug treatment for schizophrenia that could actually help stop like people having hallucinations and stuff? I'm going to wrap it all up. Okay. Schizophrenia won't be next week. Okay. Yeah. Delusions, delusions are next week. And then right. Delusions, after. right. And then schizophrenia or the schizophrenia of the week after. But we're going to really touch on what schizophrenia is and how there's so much stigma when it comes to um, people with schizophrenia. Now, people always ask, well, what is stigma? Stigma is loaded with three ingredients. And I'm going to talk more about this later. I'm just going to hit you real quick with this. The number one ingredient, according to research, Corrigan and Watson, number one is stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Number two is prejudice. And number three is discrimination. Once you have stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination, you have the recipe for stigma. And in a nutshell, what stigma is, you want to be socially distant from a certain, from people, places, or things. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what stigma is. It has originated from the Greek word to carve out or to mark as shame. So when you are in an environment where you may know someone may have schizophrenia or whatever it is, and you want to socially distance yourself from them. And how does that look? I don't want them in my neighborhood. I don't want them working with me. I don't want them sitting in next to me on the pew in the church. That's stigma that you have attached to that person because of their uh, disability. Okay. Oh, hello, Felicia. Namaste. Yes. How are you? Mm. Oh, my goodness. So any other questions, Curtis? No, um, I think that's it. But let's take a quick break before we um, go into the last segment. All right. Perfect. Be right back. And let me tell you, the things that I have been researching is blowing my mind. If I had more hair, I would pull it, but I don't have, I don't have that much hair to pull. But Armageddon isn't sexy. Well, you thought it was. <laughs> I don't know, you guys. My urbanites, hold tight. It's coming! It's headed right for us! It's already here. It's only going to advance and get better, in a sense, and stronger, and make it meaner, too. This could get ugly real fast. Amazon, 18,000 jobs cut from Amazon. Apocalypse. Crypto.com, 500 jobs cut. Coinbase, 2,000 jobs cut. Salesforce, 7,000 jobs cut. Let's see. Here's to find out that I had lost access to basically everything. I couldn't log into my email or even check my calendar. I called my boss back and we just sobbed over the phone because she was also finding out about my layoff for the first time today too. I started A combined almost 70 thousand jobs in the tech sector gone and i guarantee it they will never come back <laughs> this is going to get ugly and this is when we're going into the ugly and then what i don't know uh end of the world rapture armageddon
All right, so we are back. So let me recap what we were talking about when it comes to hallucinations, all right? So hallucinations are basically, it's based on your senses. It's a perception of having seen, heard, touched, tasted, or smelled something that really does not exist. It's, it's not there. And then what we know about it is basically if it's seeing, that means it's a visual hallucination. If it's hearing, that means it's an auditory hallucination. If it's smelling, it's olfactory right here. Touching is tactile. Tasting is gustatory hallucination. And we have general somatic hallucinations. Okay, so again, visual is when you see something that does not exist. You actually have a perception of an object and it does not exist, all right? Hearing, auditory hallucinations, when you're hearing things that don't exist. Curtis, make that little hearing thing again. They're out to get you. Everybody's looking at you. They're, there. They're coming for you. <laughs> yes, that's it, yes. So when I was doing, um, I can't remember what program, if it was my master's, I think it was my master's, there was a group of it was a, a a company or something so what they did they put headphones on our heads and that was all we heard for like 15 minutes what you mean like just whispering what, yes what did you do what you did they're coming to get you, they're yes. to get you. And yes. so, wow and why did they do that different voices so what they did was they recorded all they recorded different people. They they layered them on top of one another, and the headphones had those voices in it. Why? What? What? what was, why'd they do that? They did it so that we will understand how a person was oh, feels. Oh. Right. We will understand their worldview. We will understand their worldview. So a person with the auditory hallucinations, they hear things that do not exist. How are you? They 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 hear things that do not exist. Okay, so, well, uh -huh. well, I don't want to get too complicated before we go out of here, but uh -huh. um what about when people say they God was telling them something in their ear or something? Could they, well, now, are, they are they talking about a feeling or are they talking about they heard a voice? So, I personally have heard a voice from God. I can give you my own personal testimony. And I can tell you how I know it was really of God because there should be some type of fruit. There should be some type of outcome to back up what was said. Mm -hmm. So for me, this was prior to um, having surgery. This was many years ago. So I became sick, but I didn't know I was sick. And then I was getting ready to go jogging. And I thank God I did not go jogging because... As I was putting on my jogging outfit, I heard the Lord speak to me as if you're speaking to me to say, don't do it. Get back in the bed. Don't go jogging. Get back in the bed. So what did I do? I took off my jogging clothes, went back in the bed. I did not go jogging. Uh, the next day, I was hospitalized. And the doctor told me, and I didn't tell the doctor about the conversation that God had with me. I didn't tell her at all. And I just told her something like, um, yeah, and I was getting ready to go jogging. She said, Lisa, if you would have gone jogging, if you would have gone jogging, you would have died on that sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you got you might have to do a whole show about that. You might, let's say you might have to do a whole show about people that have confirmed. had that experience. People it have was a, confirmed. Yeah, people that have that experience. That's gonna have to be a different show. Right. And like I said, it was confirmed. Some people are like, oh, I hear the voice of God saying nothing, whatever, but there's no confirmation whatsoever to that. Whatsoever. No confirmation whatsoever. So with that. That was not an hallucination. That was real. Okay. So yes, it was 
it was one of the most, like I'm hearing your voice. I heard the voice of God. It wasn't like, Lisa, <laughs> don't do it. And then it started to lightning and thunder. <laughs> and a, it wasn't anything like that. It was, Lisa, don't do it. Mm. Okay. Go back to bed. Okay. It was, it was gentle yet firm. Now, now I'm actually hearing voices myself right now. Is that is that voices coming from? Is that you? No, Curtis. Oh. <laughs> that, that no, I'm joking. That's TikTok. <laughs> That's your TikTok. I hear voices. See, so how is, is that God? Who is that? God, is that you? <laughs> is that you, God? Right. You know, I but hear yeah. Voices right now. Yeah, no, that's the that's TikTok. Okay, okay. Yeah. So let me get off of the TikTok. And then All smelling, right. and then going next to smelling. Right. Say. The smelling is uh let's see, olfactory when you think you smell something that doesn't exist, but we said it could be caused by hormonal things. Right. But even if it's hormonal, it may be, it could be an hallucination, but it depends. It's only an hallucination if the smell does not really exist. Right. It's not an hallucination if the smell exists, but the people that are within your environment, and they haven't smelled it yet. Right, right, right. But they'll think you're hallucinating, though. Right. But you just have a better sense of smell than they do. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then tactile touching. You may feel like something is actually crawling on your skin, or these could be a sexual and sexual in nature that you feel that you're being sexually aroused by touch. Isn't that interesting? Yes, yes, yes. And is. then tasting, gustatory hallucination. Again, oftentimes people that have this particular hallucination, they may believe that whatever they're putting on their tongue tastes like iron. Yeah. Or something weird. like something Or like something that. weird. Yeah. Usually it's like metallic-y. But I've had that. We've all had that, right? Like where we taste metallic-y taste with different stuff. You know what I mean? Like, because when you said that, I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I've tasted that myself. You know what I mean? Right, right. And not just really from medicine, but maybe from other stuff. Right. You know, I feel like you taste something funny in it. But then again, it could be an extra sensory perception too. Like if some people that are saying that that's something bad, like that's just the way our brain tells us something in that is bad for us. I don't know. Well, that wouldn't be an hallucination, an hallucination right, right. right? Because there is something there. And then again, something we said does the, exist. But then we said with the pica that that's like it makes you think something tastes good that really doesn't. That is correct. There's no way dirt tastes good. <laughs> or plaster out the wall like oh, that girl. Plaster out the wall. Eat, uh, she was just picking it and eating it like a whole cup a day. Just. I oh. mean, can you imagine? Like, I mean, she was. Lit, ooh, no, she had lit. holes in the wall. Yeah. Putting posters over it to cover Putting it. Putting posters over it. Mm. Yeah. And I had my little baking soda. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, look, I was eating baking soda. Like, let me see, what's it? Like it was Hagen dolls ice cream. <laughs> I mean, like it was like, ice like cream. Like it was Trader cream. Joe's oatmeal cookies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I, that's, I, I had a craving for it. But and that's then, a hallucination uh -huh. though, right? Like that it tastes good. It's just your mind is making you think that that tastes good. Yes. So it could be the opposite where it's not telling you that something tastes bad, but it's telling you something tastes good. Right. It's just whatever taste that really doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And then general somatic is when you feel like your body is being mutilated, whether it's snakes crawling in you, bugs crawling, you know, in your body, whatever it is, you know, even to the point people may believe that their body is literally being mutilated, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it is not. Ooh, now on the other side of that, now mm -hmm. what about how when, somebody gets a, a limb amputated and then they have the phantom limb where right. like they think they still have the hand still there, but there's no hand there. There's no, and they hand can still there. feel it. Like, it, right. That's the right. They're hallucinating limb. that that body part 
is still there that had been there for many years until say for instance if one of their legs is amputated and they don't have anything to assist them like an assistive device and they stand up and they fall yeah yeah you know yeah. so yep that phantom that is that's real yeah. you know it really exists but that's it is, again your brain just telling you something that's there but it's really not there that is correct isn't the brain isn't that powerful so is here's the thing now mm -hmm. are hallucin hallucinations physical or like mental like you know what i mean like is it a, a like is it a physical thing that's going on with your brain or is it just something that you adapted from somewhere or like from like a site like a trauma or something like that that's making you have these hallucinations or is it like something a re the wiring in your brain is kind of messed up or not you know it's different right so what happens is say for instance if you use drugs right it's drug induced it's physical, lsd yeah. yeah that's physical Right. So basically what's going to happen is that chemical that's in your brain is going to restructure your brain to make you believe things exist that really don't exist. So then you have that and then you have hormonal. So hormonal, pretty much the same thing. It's all reshaping components of your brain to make your brain believe that something exists that really doesn't exist. What did Melanie say? I think something would trigger hallucinations. Well, not necessarily. So say for instance, now drug-induced drugs will trigger a hallucination. It's a causal effect of an hallucination. So if you have um, a psychiatric disability, schizophrenia, schizophrenia in and of itself may cause you to have an hallucination but I don't know if it can be triggered by All right. something. I, I, let me give you and an example. That's, hmm? that's what I was a little bit saying before, too. Like, say if you go into a certain um, place or something like that, like a, your old home or something like that where you grew up, and then you smell a certain smell, and then you remember a certain thing. So you see your grandmother sitting in the corner a little bit, or you, you know, when she's really not there, but it's kind of like a memory, and it's triggering that hallucination well, yeah that that's that's that could definitely be a triggering thing especially if you're seeing your grandmother in a rocking chair and she's not there or put like this too because like all right like so like a like a little while after my father died like mm -hmm. like maybe you know even weeks months or whatever i would sometimes still hear him like if I hear a sound, it would it would sound to me if somebody said, Curtis, like like it would sound like it was my father calling me from the other room. We would, when he wasn't really when he was gone already. You know what I mean? Right. But my first instance would be that's what I heard. Right. And no one else heard it except for you. Right. Or it might have been just some other random sound, but to me it sounded right. Like, and that's true. It could have been some other random sound that sounded like Curtis. Right. Like you know how you hear your name, like somebody somebody shouting down a block and sometimes you right. Hear, you think they're calling you and stuff. Right. I mean it can it can trigger, but it is there's always a triggering effect per se. Mm -hmm. Whether it's schizophrenia, whether it's drug induced, whether it's hormones, whether it's you know, memories, whatever, it's triggered by something. Mm -hmm. Something causes it because it's not a natural occurrence that we should be dealing with. Mm -hmm. Oh, good evening. Uh, I hope, uh, Mr. Mitchell, I hope you understand the difference between an hallucination and a delusion. So earlier today, Mr. Mitchell said that my football team thinks they're going to be number one. And he was like, I'm hallucinating. I said, no. <laughs> now, That's a delusion. I that would, be, that would be a delusion. <laughs> That's, a delusion. <laughs> That's a delusion. Cause they ain't going there. <laughs> right. But they could. But the way he presented it, it's a delusion. Now, right. say for instance, if I said I saw my football team running down the street, something, whatever, visual, whatever. Oh, if I heard someone tell me that they that my, yeah, they're gonna win. The commanders <laughs> are gonna win. They're gonna go to the no, Super Bowl. I heard it. Yeah, yeah. I heard no. Somebody told me the commanders are <laughs> gonna win. They're gonna win. That's an hallucination. Okay. That's okay. an hallucination. That's a difference. 
There, there is a distinct difference. Okay. Absolutely. Who else do we have out there? Let's see. I hope I'm hallucinating now because I see a Knicks jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a hallucination. That's not an hallucination. It's real because it exists. <laughs> Shout out to Peace Mitchell. Peace Mitchell. Who else do we have out here? Let me see. Yeah. Is anybody else? We have Peace. We have Felicia. We have Melanie. Thank you so very much for your comments and everything. So, yeah. So, that's the difference. And then next week, we're going to talk about delusions. And I am here every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the Urban Suite. I encourage you to like. I encourage you to share. And you can also listen to me on audio platforms. That would be Spotify. Um, what else? Spotify, iHeart I Radio, yeah, Google Podcasts, Amazon. I'm also on Visually LinkedIn. So I'm on multiple channels and platforms, as well as my number one go-to, which is YouTube. YouTube. 10,000 yeah. subscribers. Shout out Yay! To and we have one more shout out tonight before we go. Yes. What's the shout out? Oh man, who that's my dog Miles. Let me tell you. So, the reason why this show is called Urban Twos for Change, I don't know if I want to get through this. I feel like Wendy Williams. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason why this show is called Urban Twos for Change because we all have these tools that we use that are available in our toolbox to help us maintain our mental wellness. And one of the tools that I had was my faithful companion, my faithful dog, Miles, a big old bull mastiff who protected this family, loved on this family for 11 years. I had to make a very harsh decision and hard decision yesterday to put him down because he was riddled with sickness. And I have to say, I am going to miss him so much because with that dog, Miles, what he did for me, he allowed me to have a routine in my life. Oftentimes, People are helter skelter and whatever because they do not have a routine. He forced me to have a routine in my life. I would get up at 5, 5.30 in the morning. We would walk. I did a lot of my dissertation thinking and talking to Miles on our 5.30 a.m. walks. And then after that, I would feed him. And then I would have my meditation time. I would spend time in the Bible and he would be right there with me. Sometimes he would be on my, my lap, but I had to kind of move him away because those dogs slaw all the time. So, <laughs> so, but he would be right there with me mm -hmm. every single morning when I had my meditation time. And he is definitely a tool in my toolbox that will be missed. I loved him so much. And that's my mouse. And so that is my up. only bully that I've ever loved. My bull mastiff, Miles Lacan. He and expired as of May 1st, 2023. Yeah. And that's after you were scared of dogs when you were when you were young. Absolutely. That's and, and I'm glad dog. you said yeah. that because that is a part of my, my talk now because Miles was my very first adult dog. Mm. Like I had dogs when growing up as a kid. I had Pomeranians. I had small dogs. Because yeah. I was afraid of big dogs. Mm -hmm. But no more because, and this is what stigma, I had stigma toward big dogs. And what did I do? I socially distanced myself from big dogs. It wasn't until I embraced the big dog that I fell in love with them. Shout outs to Miles. Yes. 
Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Miles. That's my, oh, he will be missed. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you for entering into the Urban Suite with me, Dr. Lisa Lacan. We will be here next Tuesday, 7 p.m. in the Urban Suite. That's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you all have a wonderful evening. God bless and good night. <laughs>